Hey y'all, hi. So I have a box of products here from Beauty Bay, an online makeup and skincare retailer from which I have never before placed an order. I placed this order using some of my YouTube channel's budget for self-sponsored review. And there are a number of products in here that I'm hoping to review multiple times. Like I'm hoping that this haul will provide fodder for a number of different reviews. And as I go through the products and put some of them on my face today, I'll talk to you about why I made the decisions that I made when I put together this order. This is the first of the videos in which I'm gonna be featuring these products. I'm gonna show you every single one and basically kind of get to know them together for the first time. Most of them I haven't tried yet, so there are gonna be some first impressions. A couple of them I've been messing with, so there are gonna be some initial impressions that I'll be giving you in this video. But for the most part, it's like an overview of what I bought and why I bought it for review, and like a, a first step in the multi-video process of me reviewing these products. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome. I'm so glad you clicked on this video. My name is Hannah, and I really love beautiful things. I love makeup and skincare, and it's fun that this is part of my work now. But I try to approach reviews from a grounded position, always keeping in mind that there are a bunch of different reasons why someone might be shopping for makeup and buying makeup. And I also know that overspending is a problem for a lot of people in the beauty community, so I try to provide reviews that, that keep the goal of being glad that you bought what you bought in mind and the goal of not wanting to spend beyond your means in mind. And if that sounds good to you, I hope you'll subscribe. Now, let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. So let's start with the skincare that is in here. There are just a couple of pieces of skincare. One of the things that's really interesting about Beauty Bay, which if you don't know about Beauty Bay, it's a UK-based beauty retailer. So I, I made this purchase and the box shipped from the UK. And that's one of the reasons that I decided to do this because I know that not all of my viewers are based in the US. So some of you are probably ordering more from Beauty Bay than you are from some of the shops that I tend to talk more about. And I wanted to have the experience of shopping from a retailer that's maybe like a better option for some of you. So I started poking around and I'm intrigued by it because there's a real mix of high and low. There are some really affordable, what I would call drugstore brands, although I know they're not called that everywhere. There are a lot of really affordable pieces of makeup and skincare on Beauty Bay. And then there are brands like Viseart. And so when I was looking at the skincare, I made a purchase of a product that's kind of pricey, especially for me for skincare. It's by NIOD. It's the Copper Amino Isolate late serum. And I bought this as part of the self-sponsored review haul because I've always been curious about this product and because I was kind of fascinated to see that it was available on Beauty Bay. It like helped me. I, I was looking around on the website and trying to get, get a sense of its character, like the, the character of its offerings. And this is one thing that kind of helped me understand further what kind of curation is going on on Beauty Bay. And as part of my like New Year's reset, I've just been pampering my skin a little bit more, just like spending more time with my skin, doing a little bit more. So I felt more excited about trying a skincare product that's intrigued me for a long time than I ever have before. Clearly, I can't report back about this yet. I've only been using it for two days, so I can tell you it's very thin and watery. It's blue. It's the Copper Amino Isolate Serum, the newest version of it from NIOD. I'm sorry if I didn't say that. It's supposed to help with just overall skin health and strength and re just general repair and, and resiliency of the skin. That sounds fantastic to me. My skin's been really dry lately and just feeling a little bit wan. And I've also known a number of people whose opinions about skincare I really trust who love this product and are never without it. So I'll report back to this after I've used up the whole bottle. You know, I wanna make sure that I've given it a good chance and given myself time to understand whether it's actually doing anything and whether I really enjoy using it, but I've been using it morning and night now for two days. It's very easy to use. It sinks into the skin. It doesn't interact badly with any other products, doesn't pill or anything like that. So, so far it's a go. So that was a brand that I had heard of before, but I hadn't heard of this brand, Antipodes. And uh, the products looked really beautiful and I've been feeling like my skin's really dry and my lips are really dry. So I was attracted by these two products, a mask, a moisturizing mask. This is like a mini size of a moisturizing mask and like a lip balm 
a kiwi seed lip balm. This brand is from New Zealand. It's, I just looked it up. It's like New Zealand's scientific green beauty brand. That's how they brand themselves. And I have to say, this, the mask, has blown me away. I used to be a real mask-obsessed bee over here. I used to be, like, spending so much money on wash-off masks and masking all the time. At the end of my no-buy year, when I looked at how much I was spending on skincare and how I was actually using my products, I did a no-buy year in 2018. That's the year to which I'm referring, if you're unfamiliar. At the end of that year, when I looked at my spending on skincare, I realized that wash-off masks are a really bad deal because you tend to pay as much as you pay for like a serum or a moisturizer that lasts for a long time, but you only get, I don't know, 10 uses out of it and it's gone and it doesn't stay on your skin. It's like a thing that you just do one time and then wash off. So I stopped depending so heavily on wash off masks and always having them in rotation and always spending a bunch of money on them. But every once in a while when my skin's really dry, which it has been lately, I feel like nothing but a good long session with a creamy moisturizing wash off mask will do. And I didn't have one. So I got this mini size and I've loved using it. Again, I've used it for just a couple days at this point. I hate to waste some of it by using it on the back of my hand, but I wanted to show you the texture. And you know, I like it so much and my skin's been so dry that I might actually, I never do this, but I might actually buy like the full size with my own money when this is used up. One of the things that's nice about it is that it's really thin, but it's got a good presence. So I feel like even with this tiny tube, I'm able to use it a whole bunch of times. And that means that a big tube, it won't do what I was just saying, and it won't be gone in 10 uses. A little bit goes a really long way, but it provides a good barrier, and I don't know. I feel like with cream masks like this, I often don't feel like I'm really masking unless they have a super thick layer on my face, but with this, I feel like just a thin layer works, and I feel like I'm really masking. My skin has loved it and just gotten glowy and plump every time I've used it. Big fan of this so far, and I'm really glad I decided to try it. I don't like the lip balm as much. It's lovely. The packaging feels feels very luxe. I can't exactly remember the price of this. Yeah, the prices aren't on the receipts, but my memory of this is that it wasn't wildly expensive. It's lovely feeling, like the packaging and everything, the presentation. It's just really hard, which some people might like because it means that it won't squash into mush. And I guess I appreciate that. It's not squashing into mush. With a lip balm like this, what I want to do is like really go hard. And even when I do that, it's not like squashing against the side of the tube. So I think that's probably on purpose. It's well designed in that way. It just doesn't feel like I'm getting a thick layer on my skin. I think that the product is nice. I just, the application, the experience, I want to slather something thick thick, like a really occlusive layer onto my lips. And because of the hardness of the bullet, this doesn't really do that. So I haven't fallen in love with it. It's not like horrible. <laughs> I just haven't fallen in love with it. And I think it's not helping that I have recently fallen in love with this product. This came in PR a couple of weeks ago from Verst, which is a drugstore brand in the United States. I don't know if it's available in other countries, but I know that this is carried in drugstores and they have a website and it's really well priced and I'm loving this. It's like a, a mask. What is it calling itself? Conditioning lip oil. I've been using it as a sleeping mask for my lips and just wearing it around and I just, there's something about it. It's it's lightweight and easy, not, not goopy, but it's really beefy on the lips. It stays for a long time and it does its job. I'm over the moon. I, this is like my favorite product of this kind that I've tried in a really long time. So it's almost as though Antipodes Kiwi Seed Oil Lip Conditioner didn't have a chance. So that's the skincare. Let's get some makeup on this shiny red <laughs> face of mine. I do have a primer that I got from... Beauty Bay, the Jason Wu Primer Oil. I just find this fascinating that Beauty Bay, I was surprised to see Jason Wu on Beauty Bay. This is what I'm saying. Like there's something really intriguing about the mix of high and low. Jason Wu is a drugstore brand that's carried in Target in the United States. And I actually did a full review of a bunch of products from Jason Wu shortly after the brand launched. It was hit or miss for me, but the things that I liked, I really, really liked. And I didn't see this primer oil at the time, or maybe I just wasn't interested in reviewing it. It's clearly a dupe for the one from Smashbox. And I am kind of fascinated by primer oil in general, so I decided to give it a try. It's like, is it just an oil, or does it set in a way that means that it actually helps the skin hold on to makeup? I don't know. 
My skin already had a little bit of oil on it from when I did my skincare. And I mean, it does look extremely glowy and smooth kind of, but of course it does. It has a bunch of oil on it. So we'll see how that goes when I start putting other products on top. But here's a big disappointment of this experience. The entire reason that I was led to Beauty Bay to begin with, and that I started even considering doing this haul and doing all of these reviews, it's this brand, EX1. After I posted my video about having an olive undertone, I started looking around for brands that carry makeup that's specifically for olive undertones just to see what was out there. Some people were commenting about that and I did some Googling and I came across this brand, EX1 Invisaware Liquid Foundation. It's a high street brand, I believe, and the prices were very low. This product, the liquid foundation, is advertised as being like the, the primer or the, um, the foundation that Britney Spears uses. And on the EX1 website, there's all of this like celebrities use our makeup. Like there's this big thing about how celebrities love of these products. And then if you dig deeper on the website, you find out that they were developed specifically for olive undertones. But I feel like sometimes that's not apparent when you're reading about them. It's almost like that's the case, but they don't make a huge big deal out of it. Maybe so that people who don't have olive undertones won't be deterred and won't be afraid to try the, to try the brand. It's a little bit of mixed messaging that I was getting from EX1, but it was very clear that the lightest shade is specifically for people who have light skin with an olive undertone. So I ordered the lightest shade of the foundation, the lightest shade of the concealer, and the lightest shade of Pure Crushed Minerals Powder Foundation. Sorry, my hands are oily because of the primer and the oil's getting all over everything. But here's what's going on with it. The lightest shade of this, it's not light by my standards, okay? I will show you. I haven't actually even put it on my face and I'm not going to. Sorry, not sorry. Actually looking at it here, like in the, looking at the swatch, the foundation in the monitor under these lights. It doesn't look bad. That's the lighter one right here. You can see the sort of olive yellow undertone. You can see how much it matches like the undertone of my skin. Not matches, but it's like in the same category as the undertone of my skin. But the concealer, which is this swatch right here, it's, it's darkening already as it's drying and it's much too dark and much too yellow for me. It's more on the yellow side of olive, I feel. And yeah, now that the foundation's starting to dry, it's also darkening a lot. And I just feel like if I put either one of these on my face, it would give me that Oompa Loompa look. You know what I mean? Like it would be so dark. I feel like if it were closer, I mean, look at the concealer. Look at, look at it. It's orange. If they were closer, I might mix them and, you know, review the formula in that way. I just feel like it's a total miss. I mean, I, the reason that I placed the order for these products specifically is to see if they actually have something available specifically for my skin tone, my under my my undertone. And they just don't. It might be that this line was developed for people with olive undertones, but I'm not one of the people. And I feel like if I were going to mix something that's this much darker than my skin tone in with my other products, I would actually rather mix in the Purito BB Cream in shade 21, which has that amazing neutral gray undertone that works so well for me, but is a little bit too dark. I feel like that would actually take the mix of base product much closer to my skin tone than either of these simply because there's so much of that golden olive. Like these are both a very, very golden olive rather than being more of that neutral olive. And just in case you are having trouble seeing what I'm seeing because of the lighting or something, here are three swatches. One is again the EX1 foundation the EX1 concealer, and then the third swatch is the Rose Ink Concealer, which is a pretty good match for my actual skin tone. So hopefully there you can see what's missing from this shade range as far as my end of the spectrum is concerned. And these are fresh swatches. So this is before the concealer and the foundation from EX1 have even had a chance to oxidize. And they definitely both darken and become yellower as they dry. So I'm not going to use them, but the foundation, the powder foundation, which it says it's Pure Crushed Minerals Powder Foundation. I feel like it's more of a setting powder because it has some pigment, but it's not like intensely pigmented. It's actually kind of a, a good, like very, very light with a slight olive tinge setting powder for me. I do think it also darkens my base a bit, but I will go ahead and use it today 
to set my other products, the products that I know work better for me. And because these aren't new products, I'm probably going to mostly use the Rose Ink Concealer, maybe mix with a little bit of Auric Glow Lust. Because these aren't new to me, I'll spare you the whole applying these products thing because you've seen me do it a thousand times. I'm just gonna jump straight to my face with these on them and then we'll set them together with the EX1 powder. Well, what we have here is an extremely dewy situation. <laughs> I love oil as a primer for base. I like the way that makeup goes on on top of oil. The thing that I'm confused about is whether or not using a primer oil like this is any different from just having a face oil as the last step in one's routine. I assume that it's more lightweight, maybe a little more of like a dry oil, not gonna slide off the skin they've optimized it as an oil for makeup application, but I just, I think of a primer as being something that is going to create an almost absorptive or tacky base or a base that's like really, there's, there's something about it that holds on to makeup and makes makeup want to adhere smoothly to it. The makeup applied very smoothly over it. And I know that the oil and the Auric Glow Lust and the concealer together are, are the, all those three things are contributing to this <laughs> extremely, it's like a, <laughs> I feel like it's like a greased balloon or something, my cheek. I just feel like it's a little bit difficult to know whether or not the oil is actually performing that like makeup longevity role that some primers perform. So let's go in with this powder. I'm not used to using powders that have some pigment to them. I don't use all that much powder. So let's see how it goes. I've used it a tiny bit, but I feel like I haven't totally understood its character yet. I put the powder on this half of my face, but not on my cheekbone because I want the cheekbone to remain glowy and I don't feel like I need to set my base product there. But I put it like all over this part of my cheek and under my eye and all over my forehead. So it definitely killed the shine, not, to not entirely, a little bit of a satiny glow on the forehead, but you know, it made it less like this really reflective surface that kind of shows every nook and cranny, which isn't necessarily ideal for me. It didn't create an extremely dark line of demarcation on my skin, but I also do feel like it's a little bit darker, for example, than my neck. Like it would be amazing if it was several shades lighter and it helped my face get a little bit closer to the color of my neck and you know a little bit lighter and a little bit more green but it definitely is serviceable you know it works and i think probably the fact that this brand was developed with olive skinned people in mind means that it isn't doing some of the things it could be doing namely going extremely peachy or extremely golden yellow on me or extremely pink or something. I think all things considered, I will probably prefer my Givenchy like, Prism powder that has like the green, very, very pale green, very, very pale lavender in it because those colors do help to bring my face closer to the color of my neck. But I don't mind this powder at all. And of the three products that I ordered from this brand, it's definitely the most serviceable. I am going to bronze up my neck a little bit with the Kevin Aquan Neo Highlighter in Sahara. And I'm going to sculpt my brows a little bit with this product, which I didn't order from Beauty Bay. My friend, Becca, whose YouTube channel is Becca Sun, gave this to me. It's also by Kevin Aquan. It's the True Feather Brow Marker, Marker and Gel Duo. And the marker, it's like too pale and blonde for me. And because my brows are dyed this like ashy dark shade, it looks weird. It looks like my brows are bicolored when I put it in them. But I've been kind of appreciating the gel on the end. It's not as intensely laminating as like the Refi Brow Gel, which is what I usually use, but it's got a pretty strong hold. And because my brows are freshly dyed and I don't feel like I need to do much to them, I've been using it for the past week or so. It's a little bit fussy because I feel like I have to keep pushing my brows into shape for a long time. And I have to keep doing that as the product stiffens and dries because my brows, they just want to fall like a sad souffle. And if I just brush it in and leave them, they'll fall as it's drying and then they'll set in the fallen position. So I have to sort of sit here and keep shaping and shaping and shaping and, and kind of catch them right at that stage when the product is about to set. And I hope that I've done that. I hope that they don't manage to fall in the next couple of minutes. 
but I'm ready to move on. And now it's time for, I think, what many of you will consider the most exciting part of this haul and this series of products that I'm going to be reviewing. Oh, I'm remembering now what happened. When I ordered this, this product was deeply discounted. I ordered a very small Viseart palette, and it's partly because you guys have incre I, I feel like I've besmirched Viseart, and you guys have often come into the comments and been like, you really should give them a try. I've besmirched them in my new makeup releases, when I see like the new things they come out with, and I'm like, I've heard the formula is great, but for some reason this just doesn't call my name, I feel like the releases are a little bit lackluster, blah blah blah, and then people are always in the comments saying they're so dependable, the formulas are really good. I think you would really love them. You should give them a chance. Don't knock it till you try it. Don't judge a book by its cover, et cetera, et cetera. I had in the back of my mind that I would like to give Viseart a chance at some point. And I was surprised to see them on Beauty Bay. Not because I thought, not because I had a concept of Beauty, Beauty Bay as a shop that wouldn't carry them, but just because I didn't, I'm not familiar with Beauty Bay or I wasn't. So everything was kind of a surprise. And I was like, oh, Viseart, fancy meeting you here. And then I was like, hmm, maybe this is one of the things I should try because people are always telling me I should. Then I started looking Looking through and the petite little teeny weeny palettes which aren't all that expensive to begin with especially compared to how Viseart used to be priced and how all their palettes used to be priced some of them were deeply discounted and I think this one might have even been like 16 or 18 dollars or something like that and fresh on the heels of my video about having an olive undertone I recognized this color story as one that's ideal I believe that this is called the petite pro Une, and I love the color. I love, I love, this is basically like olivey bronze, right? This is my favorite color for makeup, especially for eye makeup. And then the palette is based on that color. I feel like this deep matte and this sort of paler matte are both versions of this color. And then all of the other colors, including some like plummy and rusty shades, complement it. The other brand carried by Beauty Bay that makes makeup that many of you have requested that I try, specifically this product, is Nabla. I I was tempted to buy a bunch of things from Nabla, but I really wanted to spread it around. And so I narrowed it down to just this one, the Nabla Glorious Light Glitter Palette. Look at the packaging. I love this. I love anything that's sort of like modernist meets art deco. It's extremely luxe feeling. I opened it and looked at it when it arrived, but I haven't, I actually haven't even swatched it yet. I'm gonna swatch all of these things together and it's going to be an absolute party. Look at this color story, I'll look at this. I'm very pleased with the decisions of my past self. This is the kind of thing that I would absolutely not have purchased unless I was reviewing makeup on YouTube because I have pressed glitter shades like this from ColourPop and some of them are even in really similar colors to the use. But because I was putting together this haul for review and I've had requests to review this exact specific product, I was happy to do it partly because this shade is supposed to be like a multi-chrome. Yeah, that, that is different from other pressed glitters that I have. It's like this jelly-like color. The gray, it's almost like a grayish purple jelly-like color with orange, that, that like orangey, goldy, green, multi-chrome reflex to it. But the base is very interesting. Mm, I feel like the pink one is nice because it has some very tiny particles mixed in. And the adhesive matter feels very good too. Ooh, and I like this one in the bottom right-hand corner because it's got that intense gold-silver neutrality. It's almost like it has gold and silver and rosiness and you end up with this slightly grungy neutral metallic, which I love. I feel like a lot of times brands that make really sparkly shiny things, they fall into the trap of thinking that that has to go along with color. So you'll get this super dynamic, beautiful shade that's got all these flashes of like peacock blue and green and magenta. And whereas those are undeniably beautiful products and I'm very attracted to those, I often feel like a palette like this or, or a product line with this kind of thing is missing the intensity of shine and reflect and texture in like grungy bronzes and golds and silvers. So I'm happy to see this. And actually all four of these are more on the neutral side. It's one thing I like about them. I will, I haven't forgotten the Viseart palette. Don't worry, I'll swatch it in a second. I'm excited. Are we seeing this? Is the camera capturing this? It's these two that are really exciting. These two on the end, the multi-chrome and the one that's like the goldy silver. And 
I got, I do feel like the ColourPop pressed glitters perform a very similar, uh, I mean, the same function, but there is something more refined about these. There's more different sizes and textures of glitters mixed in. I feel like the balance of tones is exquisite and the adhesive material feels a bit sturdier and, and more dependable. So it's like the elevated version of those. Let's swatch the other palette. Yes. I feel like you can't really tell by looking at the palette whether these are going to lean dark or lean pale. Sometimes shades like this, for example, Natasha Denona shades like this, they'll look paler in the pan than they actually swatch. And I like that because I like deep, rich shades. I like being able to work with a lot of pigment. But sometimes shades like this, you see them in the pan and they look really lovely and rich and then you swatch them and they're very washy and pale. So I'm happy to see that from the mattes. Wow, the metallics are like, they're surprisingly creamy for how thin they felt when I touched them. I'm, I'm kind of starting to see what you guys are all talking about. I didn't get a very juicy swatch of that, the palest one there. Either of them actually, Either the pale matte or the pale shimmer, you can barely see them. But of course, those aren't the shadows I'm the most interested in. But upon swatching it, because what everyone's always saying is that Viseart's good for mattes, but not really for shimmers. But even this weird, like very pale dun colored shade kind of has something to recommend it. It's almost like it's got a tiny bit of micro shimmer in it. It does, I think. That would make a very, a, a very good like wet look all over the lid. Okay, kind of here for this, much more than I expected to be. You know, when I placed this order, I was like, I guess I'll try this, but I wasn't really invested in it doing, in it like performing well, which I actually think is a good position in, from which to review something. I think when, when I spend my own budget on something and I've built it up in my head to be like the perfect choice and this fantastic decision and the thing that I'm gonna be so happy I bought all of that. I feel like in those situations, I'm actually predisposed to like a thing because I really want it to work. So I'm like hoping for the best. But in this situation, I don't have, have a horse in this race, really. I was just like, oh, I get this is my opportunity to try Viseart, let's see how it goes. And so I think my expectations, it's not that they were low, it's just that they were kind of non-existent. I was like, we'll just see. So I'm already excited. Okay, so I'm gonna prime my eyelids and then I'm going to do an eye look with these products. And I'm not really set up here to give you like extremely detailed close up of the techniques that I use, you know? But what I'll do is that I'll kind of narrate as I'm going through and I'll let you know what my experience is and what I'm learning about these products as I do my first eye look with them. But this is just the first. You know, the point of this video is to kind of give you a survey, a first impression survey of these things that are going to be in the hopper for the next month or so. And I will certainly come back and let you know how it's gone over time with both of these little palettes. So I, weirdly, I felt like I had to start by putting this extremely pale, almost like a grayish silver, the word done, keeps coming to my mind. It's like a very pale dun. I put it all over the center of the lid with my finger and then I swept it on the brow bone with a brush, almost like to set the eye primer. And you can see, I mean, it's very subtle and it's actually not that shiny or wet look on the lids like I was expecting. I could see it. It's a very interesting kind of like Terry Barber color. I could see myself doing an entire eye look with this, just this and mascara, on a day when I really wanted to highlight my lips and cheeks. But today, this is just gonna be the base of the look. I kind of wanted to see how it would look, but I'm going to go in with some richer and more impactful shades and build around it. Okay, so that's the lighter of these two mattes that I said kind of match the outer packaging. It's this one right here. I just put it in my outer corner and kind of up on my brow bone to lift and open my hooded eyes. I like this because, first of all, it's applying beautifully. I feel like it's got the pigment, but it's not, it's not so pigment that it's hard to work with, which is just true of some shadows. You know, it's not doing that like sticking, overwhelming, oh my gosh, so easy to mess it up thing. Um, but there's lots of pigment. There's enough pigment that it's not frustrating, you know? I wasn't expecting the matte formula to give me any trouble and it definitely hasn't. This is a great neutral for me because it's like a traditional 
crease shade or transition shade. But for me, those traditional crease and transition shades, they often end up looking really orange or too gray or too blue or something if they're more on the cool toned end of the spectrum. This is great because it's essentially an olive, like a pale golden bronzy olive matte. And that's the shade that I need for it to look neutral on me. I love it. I'm gonna use the darker one now. Again, the perfect dark brown for me, a shade that I think on some people might read as more of a deep, slightly olivey brown and it's like the neutral of my dreams. I'm finding the blend very soft, unexpectedly so, especially for shadows that are so pigmented. Okay, I blended out those same two shadows, the light, the lighter olive bronze neutral and the darker one on my lower lash line. I actually took them down pretty far and basically like gave myself dark circles, <laughs> which is something I've been enjoying doing lately. And then I added a tiny bit of this Victoria Beckham Eye Kajal in the shade Bronze, another olivey bronze that I'm finding is my perfect neutral. I'm learning a lot about myself lately. I know that these colors, the other colors, like the burgundy, the purple, even the copper and the gold would be great for my complexion, for the kinds of makeup that I love to do, but I'm gonna stop there with this and just leave it at this kind of like ideal neutral base because I really wanna go hard with the glitters. Or do I? Or do I wanna exercise restraint with the glitters? Cause I am really enjoying this. I mean, I can't even tell you how, how the fondness has swollen in my heart for this palette just in the past 10 minutes. I didn't expect to like it so much because I feel like when I look at this palette, it just looks boring. It's like four useful mattes and four useful shimmers, even though they're in perfect colors for me, it's like, Meh. but I just, I can't wait to keep using it because I love the results so much and it was so easy to use. So yes, you're all right. I've been giving Viseart short shrift and I apologize. I'm drawn to palettes that have this kind of textured thing in them. Like this, I'm drawn, I feel like when I look at a palette and it just doesn't have anything like this in it, I'm like, mm, could have done more. But as a companion palette to single extraordinary singles like this. Nothing could be better than this. And I just wasn't thinking of it that way. Which glitter am I going to use? I feel like it's definitely gonna be one of these two. And I actually, mm, I feel like we have to do, it has to be this one. This one with the sort of translucent blue base. And then maybe we'll put the other one on too. So Wow, the ba the adhesive base is excellent. I just patted on uh, a really light dispersed layer, sort of like uh, a scattering of like orangey multi-chrome stars over the lid but I feel like the impact is is intense. I mean, really, when you look up close, there aren't that many, I mean, there are a lot of individual pieces of glitter, but they're not like packed together. And yet the effect from a distance is extremely bright and sparkly. So lovely. I'm going to put the other one, the sort of silvery rosy gold. I'm going to try to pack it more densely on the center of each lid. Oh yeah, this is my favorite. It's actually easier to pack it more densely because it has more small particles mixed in. It's almost like there's like a glitter cream with bigger chunks in it. Whereas the other one, it's just chunks. So it's like an, uh, a more spread out dispersed layer. I said I was gonna go hard with the glitter and that's what I did. I must say, I approve heartily of both of these products. And weirdly, I'm like more excited about the Viseart one just because of the colors and the blend and, and how versatile it's going to be. But, but these are, of course, also very exciting too. And the formulas have impressed me very much of both of them. They've both performed as, as well as I could possibly have imagined they would. I don't have a mascara. Wait a second, I'm a fool. I forgot that I had gotten this eyeliner because I'm trying to find a less expensive dupe for the Victoria Beckham. And because I wanted to try some of Beauty Bay's actual brand, their stuff that they make. So I got a lip liner and an eyeliner from Beauty Bay, the Beauty Bay brand. And the eyeliner is in the shade Antique, which is a bronze. And at first swatch, cause I haven't swatched this yet, it's definitely not as creamy. It's nowhere near as creamy. I mean, how could anything be as the Victoria Beckham? But it is exactly the same color. The creamier, richer swatch there clearly is the Victoria Beckham. But the Beauty Bay one, it's a beautiful, the color is beautiful. There I built it up a bit. That is a 
a good color dupe. The formula is still quite creamy, even though it's not as intensely perfect as the other one. And I love the sparkles in it. It's got some little reflects mixed in, which the Victoria Beckham one doesn't. So I'm sorry I didn't get to uh, apply this to my eyes today. That the whole reason that I that was the whole reason for this. I was going to apply this as well. I will come back in a future video and let you know how it's performed on the eyes. Let us proceed to mascara. I just need to finish with some mascara. I don't have a mascara from Beauty Bay to try, but I've been testing this Beyond Mascara from City Beauty, and I'm pretty impressed so far at how much it lengthens. I think it was in a Patreon Get Ready With Me that I said this, but it reminds me of the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. It's like the thing that is the most like that of any other mascara that I've ever tried. Really, really fibrous, lengthening. It's like you can continue to create length and then continue to build length on top of that and length on top of that. It's it's a really pretty mascara. Okay, there we are. I feel like the dewiness of my complexion is really coming back, which is to say that I feel like the powder, it, it didn't continue to sort of softly mattify for long. I want to apply more powder, which I don't like because I don't like applying more powder. I don't like putting powder on top of powder and like powdering my face all day long. I wish that, that it wasn't, that the do wasn't kind of like coming through so much. I'm going to leave it for now. I just felt like it was worth mentioning because that's one of the products that I'm experimenting with today. Let's do cheeks. This, wait, where's the other one? Oh, these are two products from Revolution, XX Revolution. I haven't tried anything from Re Makeup Revolution or Revolution Beauty, XX Revolution, or any of those brands. I feel like I hear them talked about more by YouTubers who aren't American. So I, I assume that these products are more prevalent in drugstores in Europe and in other countries. And that's one of the reasons that I picked them up also because they're very affordable and I wanted it to be a mix in this video. I feel like I've been reviewing a lot of expensive makeup lately, so I'm starting to actively try to mix in some more affordable products and try to discover some new drugstore and drugstore priced gems. I chose these for my cheek products. They're the Cloud Blush and the Cloud Highlighter. One of the reasons that I picked them is that the Cloud Blush, the image of it in this color, which is called Soft Focus, it looked very pale, and I was really attracted to that. In person, it's a bit of a pinker and stronger color, but I, I have tried this. I, I tried it on yesterday. It still works, and it's a nice, fluffy, it's almost like that whipped formula. It reminds me of some K-Beauty blushes that I've tried. This, however, I haven't put on my face yet. I will do it today for you, but the reason I haven't, even though I did open it and swatch it a little bit, is that it's just pure glitter. This is the highlighter from the same release, the Cloud Highlighter in the shade Bubble. Those are the finger swatches. I mean, they do look very promising right there, and they're really soft and creamy. But look at the highlight. I don't know if you can see. I mean, it's shiny, but it's also, at least in person, you can see that it's blended away mostly to glitter. I think you can really see it in the post swatch finger. However, this kind of thing, especially under like bright light on camera, it tends to look really beautiful because it gives off a lot of shine. It's like a cream, in a way, it's like a cream version of the Fenty Diamond Bomb, a cream that's doing a similar thing, achieving a very highlighted look by similar means, namely by suspending teeny tiny reflective particles in essentially a clear base. I'm not actually wearing much highlighter lately on my cheeks because my my cheeks are usually really glowy from the base products that I use, and then when I apply a cream blush, it usually like blends with them and the glow still shows through. That's what I've been doing. I actually decluttered most of my highlighters systematically over the course of this past year. Curiously though, this is kind of a mattifying blush. It's soft, whipped feeling, blendable, it's got a very velvety texture. And again, it's like a slightly mattifying, not so mattifying that it's fully counteracting the dew of the complexion, but slightly mattifying. I like it. The color is a tiny bit brighter than I would have liked, but I feel like it's one of those colors that kind of goes with everything for me. And I could see myself reaching for it just to finish a look over and over again because it's so easy to apply and because the texture, the finish is in a way like neutral or like neutralizing. It's nice. I'm a little scared of the highlighter, but here we go. What should I use to apply it? My fingers, maybe? I'm gonna try just blending it with my fingers because it's so intense. Yeah, I don't, I feel like I'm applying 
the sort of the little sister of the Nabla eye glitters to my cheek in that I feel like I'm just putting like a paste, a glitter paste onto my cheek. And close up, I don't really like it, but that is from a distance and on camera, that is undeniably the thing. Very glowy, <laughs> it's very attractive. I feel like I put a little bit less on that side and I like it better because it doesn't look as glittery in person. But I'm telling you, this does not look as good in person as it's looking from a distance here on camera. If you were to see me in person, you'd, you would see that I have specks on my face. I feel like this product was designed to perform well under direct light like this, like direct sunlight and to look good on camera and on Instagram and on YouTube and stuff. But it's not the kind of thing that I currently like wearing. Although I'm gonna keep messing with it. I'll, let's follow its future career with great interest because I feel like maybe mixing it or layering it under a blush might be the way to go because that would tone it down a little bit. I'm actually gonna put a little more blush on top and see what happens. Well, that just completely killed the shine, what it was doing, because it, it covered up the glitter, so it's not reflecting anymore. But in person, I still look like I have specks on my face. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. First impression, no. But with all of these products, the jury is still out, except for the foundation products that are way too dark and yellow for me. I, I kind of want to put a little more now of the highlighter on to get, no, no, I'm not, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it there. But I am gonna powder, I'm gonna powder a tiny bit with like my, my favorite powder. I feel like I need a little bit around my mouth before I put on, before I put on my lip. That's the kind of satiny, brightened, finish that I like. Whereas I feel like the other powder, it just set the makeup and it didn't really change the finish, which might be what you want. I'm not saying that it didn't do what it was supposed to do. It just didn't work perfectly for me. Here's what I got for lips. I got a Beauty Bay lip liner, which I haven't even opened yet. Oh, I did open this and swatch it a tiny bit. It's in the shade Whip. It's just like a neutral pinky brown. I think the reason I got this was that it had like a lot of good reviews. It seems like this is a, hold on, cat hair. I feel like I perceived from the Beauty Bay website that this is one of the made by Beauty Bay products that people do tend to pick up instead of a more high-end version of the same thing, people who shop frequently on Beauty Bay. So I decided to give it a try and I got this Citizen Nudiversal Lip Duo because I think I saw it on a list of products that are apparently trended on TikTok this year, which I don't know anything about. I don't go on TikTok. I don't understand. I don't know. I'm not, I'm so, I'm old. I'm behind the times. So I don't really know about things blowing up on TikTok, but I read about this on, on uh, uh, like a list of things, or maybe it was watching Lauren's video about reacting to the list of things that went viral on TikTok. So when I saw it on Beauty Bay, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to try that. Look at me trying a thing that went viral. You're supposed to get your color matched by, like, you're supposed to get your perfect nude for your complexion by matching on their website. So I went to the Citizen Cosmetics website and I clicked through and filled out the form, but they don't have an option for pale olive, of course, right? They just, it's just like, is your skin tone light or dark? And then it's like, is your skin tone warm or cool. But as I've recently discovered, it's neither really. It's neutral, but like in a third direction. So I just picked the lightest one because I feel like a lot, in a lot of cases, the l super light nude is actually like a mid-toned color on me. And I was curious to see whether that was gonna be the case here. <laughs> I, as you might be able to tell by how I'm laughing, I've already tried it on. It's in the shade Abu Dhabi. It looks positively gray and kind of green. And I was a little bit, when I first opened it, I was like, oh, maybe this is my perfect nude. Maybe I need something that's like a little gray and green. And it must be said, the formula feels amazing. It's like really, really smooth, silky, lovely. I couldn't wait to put it all over my lips. And then I put it all over my lips and here's what it, here's what it looks like. It's a duo. So there's the lipstick side and the gloss side. Here's what the lipstick looks like. Are you seeing this? It's pretty much the exact, mm, it's, Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was. When I first put it on over at my vanity with like a different different lighting, different color of light, and it was kind of dark, I think it was nighttime, and so I didn't have a really good light. When I first put it on, I was like, this is literally the exact color of my complexion and it looks crazy. I, I was like, this is not gonna work. But now, I don't know. <laughs> I've always loved imagery of people wearing makeup where their lips literally are the same color as their skin. I feel like that's a really beautiful look and I've just never really been able to get a look like that or just a shade darker. And that is what this is. It's like a shade darker, very tan. I'm gonna put the lip liner on, like sort of on top of 
and around it and see if that changes it, see if that makes it seem like it's working better. Mm, it's not really working. I'm gonna blot it off. The lip liner is nice. It's it's creamy, it's applying really well. I love a wooden lip liner that you can sharpen. First impressions of the lip liner, I understand the hype if I if I correctly perceived there to be hype, but it's much pinker and darker than the lipstick. I don't know, y'all. What do we think? I feel like if anything, it's competing a little bit with the cheek, which is very almost cool toned, or at the very least like like a neutral pink pink. And this is definitely more of like a sophisticated nude kind of color for me. But I kind I like, can't, I'm lost. I can't, I'm like over here applying makeup on YouTube and I feel like I don't know what I'm doing and I feel like I can't tell if it looks bad. Is it making my teeth gray? Or does it look normal? And like it is my perfect pale nude and I'm just not used to seeing myself like this. You are gonna have to tell me. It's growing on me. I'm gonna put the gloss on top of it. I hate that look though. I hate the like gloss on top of lipstick look where it's like the pigment of the lipstick is like mixing into the goop of the gloss. So I'm actually not gonna do that. I'm gonna blot it and I'm gonna put the tiniest bit of the gloss on it just to add a little shine. The gloss also has a really nice formula. It's pigmented and it's a little bit pinker. That's the gloss right there and that's the lip looking frighteningly done, <laughs> done colored. I feel like this lip color is, it's really battling my natural lip color in order to very much change the impression of my face, you know, because it is really different from my natural lip color, which is sort of darker and more mauve than this. And that might be part of what weirded me out when I first tried it on, but what I'll say now, because I feel like this is something I'm gonna have to experiment with some more and I'm going to have to watch back the footage and like judge myself from a distance because right now I'm a little, it's a little bit hard to know. What I will say is that the formulas are good for something that seems kind of gimmicky and trended on TikTok and I kind of just, you know, got it on a lark. The creaminess, the soft velvety quality and the pigment ha have actually impressed me. I see you, Citizen Cosmetics. We'll, we'll, I'll come back and revisit you several times in the next month and then we'll we'll discuss. I like that it's not like plumping or minty or like sickly sweet or anything like that. They, it actually, they feel, it feels more like serious makeup than I expected it to. That is the last thing I'm going to say about that. And that's it. That's it. That's my, <laughs> my face. <laughs> That's the try on haul. What I am going to do is to make an active effort to incorporate these products multiple times this month. So I'll wear these products in videos. You'll be able to see them applied in different ways and they'll be linked in the description box. Then when I do like round up, like if I talk about my skincare routine, I'll try to touch base on these again. Or if I do my makeup on camera, maybe I'll try to use some of these products again and update you just in a natural way over the course of the month. And then I'll put it on the calendar to come back maybe in February, maybe like in a whole month and go through the entire box again and let you know what has changed and what I'm feeling about every single product. And then it'll have been enough time, hopefully, for me to be able to give you some feedback on the skincare products as well. For the time being, this was very fun. This is like a fun way to spend the rest of my budget for self-sponsored review for December, which is what this was. Is I, I made this haul with what remained of my budget for self-sponsored review at the end of December to kind of like set myself up for January with some things that I'm excited to review, but that weren't sent to me by brands. That's a big part of why I do this because I don't want everything that I review to just be things that were sent to me, PR samples that were sent for review. I want some of it to be things that I picked that I acquired by my own means so that I'm independent from the brand influencer relationship in that way. And I want to reiterate another important piece of this project, which is that I don't think any of these are products that I would ever have bought with my own beauty budget. And again, that's a way for me to kind of maintain my personal neutrality towards them and kind of approach them with an academic curiosity rather than like an intense investment in them and a desire for them to work out. This may have actually ended up being a very long video depending on how much time I and I was applying makeup that I'll be fast forwarding through because oh my gosh I've been filming for two hours. So if it's very long and you've made it to the end I hope that its length was a boon to you. I hope that you enjoyed watching it and I really really hope you're taking extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 